As a new teacher, veteran teacher, counselor, or education administrator, attendance laws can appear complicated and cumbersome. My aim in creating this presentation is to inform readers of their responsibilities and what is entailed in the truancy process of Washington State with regards to the 1995 Becca Bill. I chose to investigate this topic because of a situation that arose during my student teaching internship. I noticed that a few students were chronically absent and they missed so many days of school that it was not an easy task to get them caught up again. It was as if they were floating through each class in a daze because they didn't understand the material that came before the current topic and they were never sure of the classroom routines because they had only done them on occasion. These problems are likely to extend past the classroom and into the student's future. A truant child is likely to be ill-prepared for skilled work, an increasingly serious problem given the shrinking demand for unskilled labor in the U.S. These students require intervention and family involvement to direct a change in their attendance habits and to help them be successful learners and ultimately graduate from the public school system to become successful members of society. Truancy is a legal term that refers to the pattern for unexcused absences which may cause a student to be subject to Washington State compulsory attendance laws. An unexcused absence is defined by the Washington State Legislature as a day in which the student failed to attend the majority of periods in the school day or has failed to meet the school district's policy for excused absences. This is an important topic for educators, administrators, and state decision makers because truancy is expensive. When students miss class, they are often engaged in other activities that may be harmful to themselves or others. Truancy is linked to poor academic performance, dropping out of school, substance abuse, and criminal behavior. Missing school sets into motion a cycle that is hard to stop. A student who routinely misses class is likely to experience poor academic achievement and course failure. Failing grades may result in a loss of credit, and the student may not be able to stay with their grade level. This increases the student's likelihood of dropping out, which leads to expenses that society must deal with as seen in this quote from Kumbo 2012, which says that truancy is costly. It costs businesses which must pay to train uneducated workers, it costs taxpayers who must pay higher taxes for law enforcement, and welfare costs for dropouts who end up on welfare rolls or underemployed. The Becca Bill was passed in Washington State in 1995. It was named after a 13-year-old runaway girl who was murdered in 1993 in Spokane. Its aim is to stop truancy before it becomes a problem. The Becca Bill requires schools to inform students' parents of unexcused absences and to schedule conferences with the student and parents if positive change is not made. The school is required to take steps to eliminate or reduce the child's absences, such as individualizing instruction or referring the student to alternative programs or community truancy board. The Becca Bill also stipulates compulsory attendance laws which state that children between the ages of 8 to 18 are required to attend public school full-time. Exceptions are made if a student attends a private school, is homeschooled, attends a certified education center, or is excused by the superintendent because they are physically or mentally unable to attend. There are also additional exceptions for students over 16 years of age. They're not required to attend a public institution if they have already met graduation requirements, have received a certificate of educational competence, or they're regularly and lawfully employed and their parent agrees that the child should not attend school. Truancy provisions in the Becca Bill include a stepwise process meant to intervene at specific intervals if a student begins to accumulate unexcused absences, as shown in Figure 1. Each day that a student is absent, the school must determine whether the absence is unexcused. If the student has an unexcused absence, the school must inform the parents of the potential consequences of additional unexcused absences. When a student has two unexcused absences in a month, the school must schedule a conference with the parents and student and take additional intervention steps. A school has the option to take legal action in juvenile court when a student has accumulated five unexcused absences in a month, but it is not yet required. If the student accumulates seven unexcused absences in one month or ten during the school year, the district is required to file a truancy petition in juvenile court. Some schools wait until the maximum seven unexcused absences have been accumulated before they begin a truancy petition, while others begin the process at five or six absences because they have the option to do so. You should check with your district to find out what their specific policy is. When a petition enters into the juvenile court, a hearing will be scheduled unless other intervention actions can be taken. 
If the child fails to comply with the court order, various actions may be taken, such as detaining the youth in a county detention facility or imposing an alternative such as community service. The court can also order the parents to pay fines for up to $25 for each day of unexcused absences or perform community service themselves. Now that you understand the Becca Bill process, you may be wondering whether or not it's effective. Prior to the implementation of the Becca Bill in 1995, school districts rarely filed truancy petitions. The new law increased the annual number of petitions from 91 in 1994 to over 15,000 in 1997. This increase in petitions and required interventions prior to filing a petition results in an increase in the money spent by school districts to fund the process. The state does reimburse school districts for the money that is spent on Becca Bill truancy provisions, but the court process actually costs about one and a half times more than the amount that is reimbursed by OSPI for each truancy petition filed. Table 1 shows the truancy report totals for the 2010 to 2011 school year. It's interesting to note the difference in the number of unexcused absences between the lower grades and the high school grades. This data shows that 12.3% of high school students and 1% of younger students had 10 or more unexcused absences in the 2010 to 2011 school year. A study conducted by the Washington State Center for Court Research provides similar estimates concluding that 13.6% of high school students and 1% of younger students accrued 10 or more unexcused absences each school year. The data presented in the table also raises the question as to why so many students appear to be eligible for a truancy petition, but it was not filed by the school district. On average, school districts file truancy petitions for 32% of youth who would be eligible under the law. The most common reason for not filing a truancy pet petition is that youth are nearing their 18th birthday and their attendance has improved. The Washington State Center for Court Research completed a study attempting to evaluate the impact of a truancy Becca petition on youth by comparing outcomes including attendance, grade point average, graduation, and juvenile crime for a matched sample of petitioned and non-petitioned youth that are meeting requirements for filing a truancy petition. This study found no evidence that court petition truants fared differently on any of the assessed variables. Because the study did not compare outcomes for youth who received different interventions, it could not draw conclusions about the effectiveness of the truancy court process when combined with appropriate interventions. The study proposes that simply sending these students through a court system with limited therapeutic options is not likely to have much positive impact. The Washington State Institute for Public Policy studied various types of programs that have been implemented in different districts nationally and whether or not they have been effective intervention strategies. They found that there have been few rigorous studies evaluating the effects of truancy and dropout programs on at-risk students. Overall, the national literature suggests that targeted programs for older students make small positive impacts on dropping out, academic achievement, and attendance. The programs investigated in this study were alternative educational programs within a traditional school, mentoring, behavioral programs, youth development, academic remediation, and alternative schools at separate educational facilities. Alternative educational programs, behavioral programs, and school-based mentoring were found to be the most successful programs to improve student attendance and enrollment. It is interesting to note that students attending alternative schools at separate facilities were actually significantly more likely to drop out than similarly at-risk students in traditional schools. Many resources exist for parents and students to find ideas and organizations involved with intervention strategies for truant students. These types of local resources can typically be found through the school counseling centers or district offices. Administrators interested in creating a truancy reduction program should read the free publication by the Center for Children and Youth Justice titled Truancy Reduction Research, Policy, and Practice by Kumbo 2012. Teachers may also benefit from the information contained in this document because it includes lists such as the top five reasons why students say they dropped out. This type of information would also be useful at a parent conference when discussing truancy issues with students and parents. Information such as this list of students' reasons for leaving school can help teachers to reach out to chronically truant students. It should be notable to teachers that the top reason listed for students leaving school is that they find their classes uninteresting. The Colorado Foundation for Families and Children, now called the National Center for School Engagement, offers 10 things schools can implement to improve student attendance. You will notice the importance of collaboration and communication within the ideas contained in this list. 1. Make students and parents or guardians feel welcome. 
Make a point to say hello to every parent or guardian or student you see in the halls and outside. Make it your business to know his or her names. Two, create an environment that enables students to feel successful in something, no matter how small it may seem. Award academic and attendance letters as you do for athletics. Three, when a student is absent, immediately talk to the parent or guardian, not their answering machine. Make a personal phone call in the evening or call parents or guardians at work during the day. Four, when a student is absent, immediately talk with them about why they were gone. Let them know you're aware and that you care that they're at school. Five, forge a relationship with local businesses where youth may congregate when truant. Encourage them to keep students in school during school hours. Create a poster that states, we support youth in school and will not serve anyone under 16 during school hours. Six, forge a relationship with local law enforcement. Make them your allies in showing the community, families, and students that school is a place to be. Empower community police officers to return youth to school. Seven, don't provide the temptation for youth to be truant. Close your campuses during breaks and lunch. Eight, empower and expect classroom teachers to take action when they think a student may be true. Ask teachers to make calls to absent youth or families in the afternoon or evenings. Nine, reward and recognize good attendance, not just perfect attendance. Post large signs giving the daily attendance for the day. Reward individuals, classes, and the school for increased attendance. Ten, make your school a place where students feel safe and respected. Adopt the character education program that is planned and implemented by students. The ideas presented in the previous list provide a summary of the interactions that should take place within a school to support students and prevent truancy. Some of the tasks presented within the list are the responsibility of the administrators and the entire school, such as creating an environment where parents feel welcome and students feel successful. Other ideas fall upon the shoulders of the teachers to implement and utilize in the classroom, such as rewarding or recognizing consistent attendance. Other ideas fall upon the shoulders of the entire community, such as including local businesses and police force to support students being in school and not within the community during school hours. This cooperation among different areas of students' lives helps young people, especially adolescents, to stay in school and enjoy being there. This final quote summarizes the findings related to the creation of a successful truancy prevention program within our schools. Systemic solutions to attendance problems will originate from a system that is made up of teachers and administrators who understand the connectedness of a supporting climate, significant relationships, engaging and challenging content and instruction, rules, policies, and procedures. All of these things are required to create a successful truancy prevention program and keep kids in school. For more information, read the paper that accompanies this presentation or refer to the information in these documents.